The Body Shop connects you with the hottest fitness models in the world. Learn the backstage secrets that most successful bikini divas, fitness models, and bodybuilders use to dominate their competition and land on the covers of magazines. Only here at The Body Shop will we allow you to listen and talk to the best of the best in fitness competition. If you're passionate about bodybuilding and fitness, you have found your new home. All of us here at FTNS Radio would like to welcome you to The Body Shop. Body Shop. Ladies and gentlemen, let's welcome your host, Andre Brick St. Clair. Yes, yes, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another edition of The Body Shop. Thank you for allowing The Body Shop and FTNS into your homes and into your airwaves. Now with me in the studio is my co-host, Mr. Brian Canone. Andre, what's happening, man? Oh uh, man, you know what I'm doing today, Big B. How's everything, man? Everything's good. You know what? What's up? Gene Simmons just added me on Google Plus. Gene Simmons. Gene Simmons, man. Of Kiss fame. Oh yeah. You know the guy with the what is it, <laughs> five inch tongue, six inch tongue? I tried to get you to come with me to the Kiss concert. You wouldn't do it. I'm not into that. Not into that type of music, no. Doesn't matter. (laughs) Greatest show on earth. Greatest show you've ever seen. I'll take your word for it. (laughs) (laughs) You know, I mean, I've always been a fan of Kiss and and what they've done, but for Gene Simmons to uh, put himself out like he always does, Mm -hmm. I mean... You know, he, he, the guy's everywhere. Right. You know, have you watched the Family Jewels show? You no, sir. That? No. Nope. <laughs> nope. Not even going to lie to you. Well, <laughs> well you know, it's just a, he's just a good example of somebody who's always done the same thing. You know, right. he, he, he's in a rock band, but he's still out there. Mm-hmm. Um, th- that's a band that's known for marketing themselves, okay. branding themselves, and merchandising. Okay, I you like know, that. I like they that. They have... Uh, Kiss coffin, mm. you know, kiss condoms. They have everything has their logo on it, and they get paid on everything. Okay, well, let me ask you this then: How would a fitness competitor, yep. better yet, a bodybuilder? Yes, because it's easier for a fitness competitor mm-hmm. to market themselves out there, mainly because uh, the way the industry seems to be going right now. Yeah, you have a lot of the, um, you know, the workout clothes and the. You know the protein supplements are now being geared a lot towards the fitness industry right somebody like myself that is a bodybuilder mm-hmm. that's a rather big gentleman yeah. how would we go about marketing ourselves if we're not the typical you know 305 pound juiced up bodybuilder well there's always you have to find what it is that that's what's important to you yep and and what kind of ends up being your niche okay. of what you do okay you know so um you know like we were just talking a little bit about about this fitness kid right this mm-hmm. fitness kid who's like how how old's the fitness kid he's like eight or something 10 years um, old 10 years old okay and and he's blowing it up right now right and you know the kid has a pr agent he right. has a PR he agent. Hired a PR agent. Well, I got an agent. Right. I got an agent. Right. I'm not right. impressed. Right. Okay. <laughs> yeah. I'm not impressed. You know, and it's when does it cross the line between being a sport and being a popularity contest? You know, okay. and, and there's, I think there's, there has to be this. You have to understand that these people do hire. You know, sports people. Mm-hmm. You know, all have people that do their PR, right. and and really push them. So. um I think a lot of it has to do with, with uh, marketing yourself on, on the social networks for for a good start. Well, speaking of marketing, I yeah. know I know we have a guest. Yes. Okay, and uh, this guest yeah. and his wife. Mm-hmm. Okay, their names have been mentioned so many times while they come onto the body shop. Yeah. You know, we've had people like Candace Hudspeth has come on and and and, and you know has sang their praises and right. and and, right. and what they do as a team. Yeah. And the way they go about marketing themselves, I yeah. find that very very interesting and unique being that they both compete for the same organization. So, I can't wait to get this guest on the line because I want to dig deep and I want to ask him some real questions, you know. What do you want to ask? Well, I tell you what. Let yeah. me get him on the phone. So, ladies and gentlemen, 
please welcome to the body shop champion bodybuilder WBFF pro and I believe this man's arms are the same inches as mine please welcome mr. Matt Sterling <laughs> hey guys how's it going what's up Matt how you doing today man well not too bad not too bad I'm feeling pretty good today I got, I got some carbs in me today I like that I like that <laughs> yeah, yeah feeling well man okay now let's talk about that for a minute okay you got some carbs in you uh, if I'm not mistaken, you about 30 days away from the world's championship, correct? Yep, exactly. I got the 30 uh, even on my hand today. So <laughs> <laughs> he writes the 30 on his hand too. <laughs> well, 30 days. 30 days. Yep, 30 days. Um, on day one, that's one day left until show. That's, that's how we. Uh, that's how we do it. And right. it's just our, it's just our little thing, you know, our little psyche. And every time I look down, it's uh, it's right there in my face, right? I, I know what's up. I know what I got to do today. <laughs> Everything I reach for is there, you know. Every time I'm repping and pushing the weights I see that it's just yeah <laughs> I like that I like that okay so let me start off with the first question for you okay yep sure and that is when did you fall in love with fitness when did I fall in love with fitness yes sir. it's honestly been about um, well I was 13 years old okay. um, when I really like started pushing towards it and and actually started like picking up magazines and um, you know even at school like I'd be hiding you know magazines under my desk and stuff while you know during math class <laughs> <them out>. <laughs> <laughs> it, it honestly started pretty like you know even before that I was always kind of fascinated with um, you know wrestlers and you know the muscles and everything yeah I think that's when it really started and you know um, grade seven and eight basically right now that went into high school it was it was something that really captivated me and yeah it took off from there okay now approximately how long have you been involved in the sport of bodybuilding now um it'd be actually uh 10 years this year 10 years i've actually been competing okay 10 years you've been competing so at the age of uh, 18 i'm now 28 okay so i competed over uh, 11 shows over that time right yeah now um Correct me if I'm wrong, Matt, but you actually was uh, competing for the Muscle Mania um, um, Federation, correct? Yeah, yeah, I did for years actually. So um, as a junior competitor, and right. I I did win some world titles and some and some national ones, and uh, it was it, that was a really good experience for me. And that's what really um, you know got me going in this sport. It was just an amazing experience to get started, um, you know. So yeah, that's that's pretty much where it all began for me. Okay, yeah. now. Uh, walk me through the journey from competing at Muscle Mania and um, I know you was training at uh, a gym in Hollywood, California. Mm -hmm. Okay, so walk me through the transition from going from the USA, you know, um, um, federations such as Muscle Mania to eventually making the transition over to the WBFF, which is now owned and operated by Paul Dillette. Yeah, I mean, the, the whole transition for me was, um, it actually went on, I guess, during transitions in my life, you know, I mean, I started competing and then, you know, had like a little time lapse where actually I stopped for about, it was just over a year, and I went away to college with uh, my wife, who's also on the line, and, um, you know, from there, I mean, that's when I started, like after college and going through fitness and health promotion and, and then getting started with the whole personal training thing, that's when I wanted to start competing again. And I did go back into some muscle mania shows. I mean, the experience was okay, but I just found like, um, you know, I was kind of, I found myself eventually doing it actually for the kind of the, you know, maybe not the right reasons why I was really liking it and um, I wasn't really doing it for myself at that time. Okay. Um, just really being pushed by the organization and I just wasn't re maybe ready for that, you know, what they were asking of me. And, um, but now like with the WBFF, I've just kind of found some, you know, uh, some, a new, uh, like a fresh breath of air with the whole deal, you know, I've, I've come into the organization and it's, you know, um, with Emily. Uh, three, four years ago, mm -hmm. and I just found it was just uh, exciting, you know, the way that they really pumped everything up and, you know, the way that the athletes were treated, um, you know, right from the first show that we stepped, um, um, you know, stepped into, it was like, wow, right. right? And with that wow factor, that's that's what's kept me here. So, okay. Right. And um, each year I've just progressed and, and tried to get better and better, and that's and that's really what's kept me is, is the wow factor, right? It's like it's like anything. It's like selling something, you know? Exactly. And, and, the, and they've sold me on their organization. I like that. Okay, now, let me bring on your wife. So, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, I would like to personally welcome 
one of the first people to ever greet me once I stepped foot in Canada, okay? Because <laughs> she actually did. She came up to me. She had no idea who I was. I had no idea who she was, but she was just like, hi. You know what I'm saying? I thought that was, you know, really, really cool. Now, this is not just any person, okay? This woman has stood on stage with the best of the best. She has beaten almost everybody there is to beat within this industry. She stays in shape, and she is genuinely a sweet person. Please welcome WBFF Pro and all around beautiful individual, Miss Emily Sterling. <laughs> You're making me bless on the other hand. Hey man, you need to listen, listen, you gotta be careful now. Your husband's listening, all right? Oh, you don't worry, be... I've got a hat on. Okay, gonna... There you go, there you go. <laughs> how are you, Emily? I'm good, how are you? It's good, I'm good, I'm good. You know, it's been over a year, you know, since we saw each other, spoke to yeah, each other. Isn't it? Yeah, yeah okay. It's come fast. Yeah, yeah, it, it actually does. So, with the world's coming up, right? Mm -hmm. Are you stepping back on stage? Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> of <course I> am. <laughs> All right. Now, Emily. Yes. For a woman such as yourself, who's young, married, have a career, has their own business, okay? How do you find the time to still stay in shape? Well, considering my job basically is being in shape, mm -hmm. um, personal training and doing online coaching and competing, uh, I put myself first as a priority to make sure I stay in shape because if I don't live the life, then I obviously can't maximize it in the other potential areas where it needs to, where it needs to be addressed. Okay. So I just I make time, right? If we sit there and we use excuses, oh, I can't find time, then you're never going to find time. So I usually try to get up in the morning and I'm doing my morning cardio. And then uh, contest prep, usually I'm doing morning cardio and I'm doing a workout throughout the day too. Okay. Go ahead, bro. What's up? How do you guys find that when you're so, like, obsessed with, with fitness and you, and you have a gym, you're doing personal training, and you're training yourself for world championships, like... What's like your downtime? Like, what do you do, like, <laughs> to keep yourself like into it and give yourself a break from it at the same we time? And hey, keep in mind, this is a PG show, okay? <laughs> <laughs> well, downtime. I, I don't know if we have really downtime. To yeah. Spend. I guess we use it. I use we down. I guess we use downtime as time to work on our business. Um, I mean, our TV really hasn't been turned on too much for the last three or four months. Mm -hmm. um, sometimes I'm away on the weekend if I'm going and I'm doing some camps um, with some of my athletes or if I'm going to shows, that, which is really not downtime. Right. Um, but it's time out of, I guess, normalcy. I guess we're just trying to get used to it. Yeah. As soon as contest prep is done and the show is done, I think then that's usually when we focus on trying to get away for vacation for, you know, I think maybe October we're gone for, for a week, November we're gone for a week, and then usually in the beginning of the new year we're gone for a week, and then it's kind of the same repeat mm -hmm. with working straight through. Okay. So now, Emily, you're a two-time WBFF figure pro, uh, or, or are you a two-time WBFF world champion? Um, Two-time world champion. Okay. Uh, three. Well. Three times. Go ahead and say. Three, uh, three times. <laughs> if I'm, no, I'm a two-time overall, or sorry, one-time overall. Right. I my amateur. Um, that was the very first year, and then the second year I won the short um, class, so I still won the short class in the world championships. And then the next year I won the figure pro, and then last year I placed second. So mm -hmm. I, I don't know how we want to justify that one. <laughs> it always gets confused. Some people say two-time figure pro world champion. So I'm hoping after this year I can actually say that. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay. Well, I like that. Now, since you and your husband, Matt, when you guys started your your company, and it's an online training company, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. How is that with the atmosphere in the home when you both compete? And um, like I said, Emily, you're always in great shape. You know, you're ripped. You probably got hands down the best abs for a female in the business. That's hands down. Okay. And Matt, you're just a ridiculous character, right? <laughs> what is that like when both of you are in the house and you're dieting? Who gets the last sweet potato? Who gets the last chicken? I mean, come on, talk to me. <laughs> yeah, we're I guess keeping our distance. I mean, it's like, I don't know, half the time I'm cooking and <laughs> I'm outside. That's like my downtime. Okay. I'm just, I'm outside cooking 12 chicken breasts at a time. And, <laughs> you know, she's in here chopping romaine lettuce all night. And <laughs> I mean, I mean we, we try to find a balance, right? We're, we're just like... Um, 
um, I find that we just we just get so busy, but it is kind of good. Like that we're we we are passionate, right, about like what we do. Absolutely, we really are. I mean, that's what drives us to you know to be you know to help our athletes and and to help each other and you know to whatever whatever it is day to day gearing mm-hmm. around our fitness, right? I mean, otherwise it would be it'd be quite insane. I mean, I mean we still have normality things like any other couple, right? Mm-hmm. That's for sure. Okay. Do you guys work out together too? No. 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 We have our own trainer. Like we have uh, one of our our trainer is actually Jay. He's he's um, one of one of our employees slash friends mm-hmm. slash coworker. I guess you can say right. And um, and so that really allows us, I think, to you know just have our own time. I think right. you know just right. have uh, it allows us to focus on ourselves and have you know get Jay's input. So. All right. Being that you guys work out separately from one another, you each have your own individual trainers. Let me get some secrets from you guys, and that is, which workout routine has worked has worked the best for you? And I want Emily to answer first. Which workout routine has worked best? Each year, my body changes a little bit. Okay. So I'm a, I'm a big fan of doing conditioning style workouts. Um, and that worked really well for me in 09. Mm-hmm. And last year, I think I did a little bit too much of conditioning-based stuff and didn't um, focus as much on weight. So this year, we came with a new plan of attack, and I'm doing more weight training and just a little bit of conditioning in it, okay. making sure that my food is manipulating. So I'm still trying to take some things that I did in 09 and some things that I did in 2010, and I'll find a better mix for what it is this year as well. So, and so far, everything seems to be working well, and I'm keeping my muscle for what I need to be keeping my muscle for. My shape's there. Um, my muscle, like my muscle density of the tissue, is is there as well. Mm-hmm. I'm hoping, um, hoping to just the reverse mix of a little bit more weight and less conditioning while still doing cardio every morning is going to be more beneficial than what I did last year. Okay, as a female, do you really like cardio? Nobody likes cardio. <laughs> I, hate cardio. I, hate, I hate cardio as much as anybody else does cardio. Right. Okay, now Matt, same question for you. Uh, which workout routine do you feel works the best for you? I mean, honestly, if you're to see like what Jay does to us, I mean, I, I'm, I'll speak for myself. The guy is crazy. I mean, we we collaborate on a lot of things, a lot of ideas. I mean, we're both, you know, professionals in the sport, but. It's hard to say there's any one thing. For my body in particular, I mean, I, I, I have to try and lift heavy. You know, he has to be there with, you know, helping me with force reps. And I, and I, and I need that volume, too, you know. Right. It's just it's just my body type. I mean, um, I'm naturally very ectomorphic, you know. So, um, yeah, he's just, yeah, it's hard, it's hard to say any one particular routine. Um, but we're always changing things, always hitting different angles, always trying to stimulate in some different way. You know, there's a lot of pre-exhaustion, you know, DC type sets and Rest pause sets. I mean, we're using a lot of different tools, and we're always tracking things. But I mean, every workout that I've had um, for this this training camp, getting ready with Jay, has been like so so productive, and it's it's really showing. I think with both of our results this year, I mean, I feel like we're both on track. Okay. We both look, you know, like we're on track, and it's just, yeah. So I don't have. Sorry, I don't have any one answer. Of no, no, no. Particular, like you know, <laughs> this is the workout, or <laughs> so. But uh, yeah. No, no, no. <laughs> See, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm a little reserved on this one. <laughs> See, what I want is is I want real answers for real questions. Because when we come back from the break, okay, I'm gonna really pick your brains. I want to know about diet. I want to know about what keeps you both motivated. And then I want to find out if it's still fun for you guys. All right. So I want y'all to just stay tight, ladies and gentlemen of the Body Shop. You guys stay tight. We'll be right back. You're listening to the Body Shop. Thank you for breaking new ground with FTNS, world's first fitness radio. FTNS Radio reaches out to over 70 million online radio listeners in North America who can log in via the web at ftns.co from any computer, mobile device, or download the free FTNS iPhone app. FTNS Radio will include a wide range of shows such as strength training, bodybuilding and figure, nutrition, motivation, Family, youth, elderly fitness, wellness, lifestyle fitness, interviews with professionals and enthusiasts, and much more. Programming will contain a mixture of live studio shows, but encourage listeners to call 650-ASK-FTNS or tweet in. Shows hosted over the phone, as well as remote recorded shows where our hosts travel to the story. 
FTNS Radio is the missing link to help make fitness personal and create a stronger community. FTNS helps listeners to focus, train, nourish, sustain, and foster the fitness community. Follow FTNS on Facebook.com forward slash Go FTNS. Stay tuned for more exciting new shows as we build the fitness community brick by brick. Tune in at 10 a.m. Eastern for Fit You. Your hosts, John and Kelly, will discuss fitness, nutrition, and a lifestyle that will fit you. At noon Eastern, it's time for Jumpstart. Chad and Kat will help you sort through all the fitness myths with the experts in a high-energy format that will definitely pump you up. Listen in to Your Health is Your Wealth with Dr. Cindy at 1 p.m. Eastern. Naturopathic Dr. Cindy Anderson will help you understand your body from a holistic approach. At 3 p.m. Eastern Time, listen to The Nutrition Scoop with nutritionist Jerry Zatkoff. She will cover the latest in ever-changing nutrition information. The Body Shop at 9 p.m. Eastern. It's no accident. Hosts Andre Bricks, St. Clair, and Brian Canone share with you the reality of the bodybuilding and fitness modeling industry as they follow challengers through the Fitness Atlantic competition. This is FTNS. Need FTNS on the go? There's an app for that. Download the FTNS app for your iPhone, iPad, or iPod Touch now. FTNS, world's first fitness radio, will keep you moving. Yes, 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 ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to the Body Shop. I am your host, Andre Brick Sinclair. And my in studio calls is Mr. Brian Canone. Hey. That's what that's what it is. And on the line we have the first couple of the WBFF. We have Matt and Emily Sterling. How you guys doing? We're good, we're good. All right, all right. So before the break, you know, we find out a little bit about, you know, both Matt and Emily and their passion for for the sport and, and you know, um they don't train together, which mm-hmm. To me, I like that because I don't think a husband and wife should do everything together. You know, you're supposed to have a little bit of separation. What I want to know for both of you is: is this still fun, or do you are you viewing it more so now as a job? Well, you want to answer that one first? No? <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, I got y'all. I got y'all now. Huh? All right, all right. <laughs> is, it, is it fun or or is it a job? I'm, yeah. I can. Well, I guess if I sit back and I, I, I look at it honestly now, I mean. I am a little a little smarter about it now, you know. I do know how to take advantage of, I guess, what I do have, you know what I mean? Okay. I mean, before, like, you know, 10 years ago, like I said, when I was with Muscle Mania, and if you would have asked me to say, you know, you know, Matt, you can, you're going to be a superstar, and, you know, we need you to promote yourself, and, you know, you'll get there, and blah, blah, blah. But you, like, I, I, wasn't, I wasn't ready to do it for that, you know what I mean? And that's why I said I was doing it for the wrong reasons that, you know, years later. I mean, I was just passionate about it, man. I just wanted to step on stage and, and win. Right. You know what I mean? I, I, don't, I, didn't, I didn't care care about the posters and you know having my face out there and this and that I just I just wanted to be the best and I wanted to you know do it for myself and to you know and I kind of lost touch with that after a while and to a certain degree I still really do like it for that because it's the you know it's a big challenge to me and you know when I step on stage and I go through a 12 or 20 weeks of you know that hardcore dieting and training with my trainer I mean at the end of it if I have no regrets at the end of the day I mean I feel like I can literally do anything you know okay. Um, and on, you know, it, so is it fun to me? I mean, it, yeah, it, you know, that whole journey is definitely fun for me. And along the way, um, you know, the business does kind of come with it. I, I think people just, you know, are naturally kind of attracted to it, you know. And um, I'm at the point where I've gotten a little bit smarter with business, and and I just know how to work with it, right? And um, I think, I think just being passionate about what I do and everything, and you know, um, and then of course I'm doing well within the sport. I think it just, like I said. Um, the business just kind of naturally comes, you know. I just I find you don't have to um, fight and push for it and just blast yourself out there right. trying a whole lot, you know what I mean, and, mm-hmm. and getting minimal return. But um, I guess I guess definitely a bit of both. But it's still definitely fun for me. Otherwise, I don't th- I don't think I'd do it, man. <laughs> okay, okay. Yeah. Emily. Well, I'm gonna have to say the end result is definitely fun. Now the training up to it, I'm not gonna lie, it's not that fun. <laughs> and, and the dieting really isn't that fun either. 
and it is a job making sure that I commit to, to doing the cardio, making sure that I'm committing to the workouts, but if I didn't love it, then I wouldn't be doing it. I'm a pretty stubborn person, so if I don't like something, there's no way I'm going to convince myself to do it. Mm -hmm. At the end of the day, I'll probably keep competing for a while just because I do love everything that goes with it. I love having a good network of people that are around me. We motivate each other. Uh, you know, all of the the, mar the marketing, the media that goes into it, that did used to be a job, all of my YouTube videos. I don't do as many right now because what I'm going to start doing, I'll start throwing some more samples that I've recorded all of them that I've needed to record. I just haven't had the time to put them out and throw them onto YouTube yet because I've been doing a little bit more things this year than last year. Right. Mm -hmm. So I'm finding that a little bit of a job, but what I'm going to be doing afterwards is I'm going to be launching, um, I'm going to be launching my own series of workouts that are going to be put on my website to, to sell. So okay. it's going to be taking a different approach to it afterwards as well. Right. But absolutely. I still love it. And it is a job, but it's a job that I'll continue to keep doing because I love. Okay. Actually, hold on. Hold on one second, Brian, because I got to say this. Yeah. I just got hit with an email. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> WBFF Pro. Obi Obadike, he's listening, okay, and he wanted me to tell you, uh, Matt and Emily, both hello, and there it is right there, see, there's the okay, email. Okay, okay. Okay, I see. Hey, Obi. There you go. <laughs> see, I don't make stuff up. All right, so, Emily. Yes. You're going to be launching the workouts and stuff like that, right? Yep. What's up, Get? No, I have a question about that. Oh. You know, um... Matt, you had mentioned that, you know, marketing yourself. Mm -hmm. um, how important do you feel that is with whether it's bodybuilding or fitness or figure um, bikini to make that part of your preparation and, and what you're doing? I mean, I, I think it's important, and I think that everybody maybe probably does it, you know, for their own their own reasons, you know. Right. I was um, talking to one competitor just like the, yesterday morning, and uh, just going over a little bit of that. Where I think so many people get caught up, like when when you're just a regular athlete, like you're gonna run a marathon or something. You 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 practice, you practice, you go run the marathon, and then you go home at the end of the day. You know, right. w with with this industry, it's almost like. Like you kind of have to do it yourself. You don't really have like a, like a, a, a PR person that necessarily like does stuff to try to you know get these big audiences to show up. Um, so a lot of it is dependent upon the athletes to kind of spend time on YouTube and making websites and 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 putting themselves out on the social media a lot more so than than any other sport really. Yeah. You know, and in the whole industry of this like fitness bodybuilding modeling figure and everything mm -hmm. it, it's it's a a lot of people have that drive to, to get the exposure you know to be in magazines and to do things so it's it's almost like this cross between like it's a sport and it's like an agency to like get yourself yeah. on you know more popular that's right you know so you know there, there's this it definitely takes a time where, where each competitor should kind of either most of them are going to do it themselves. Like, not many people are going to have somebody that actually does it, like like PR. We've had a few guests on the shows that are like like John Gallo and stuff that own mm -hmm. gyms that that have PR people that they pay, and it's not cheap. You no, know, they, they definitely know it. You know. <laughs> Because what was your question for him, though? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> My question was waiting for him. Like, well, yeah, the question is more like, like, how much time do you feel like you have to spend on Facebook? You know what? Like, honestly, I, I think for me, what I put out there is I like to put like what's real. You yeah. know what I mean? I mean, as an athlete, like, I, what have I catered to? Like, or what have I um, not necessarily catered to, but what have I been kind of absorbed to in in my kind of you know past with bodybuilding and i, I want to see what's real man i want to see like i want to see you know if it's a bodybuilder like show me the real deal like what are you doing in the workout what do you eating? yes what's the what's the daily things like what are the what are the what do you do in a day what's candid like not you know what i mean uh, i think it's like the fakeness where sometimes i, I that's not what i personally care for you know mm -hmm. and so i just i think that's the kind of connection i want to get with people i mean to show them and let them feel like you know, hey, this is what I really endure. This is what I really go through. You know, I, I am, and I, I feel like I am an athlete, and I do like, um, you know, 
I think that's how I would like to be recognized, right? And I, I guess the simplest thing I can say is, is just keeping it very real. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, to me, that's what it is. And I think that's what I've always been attracted to because that's what I can relate to. Okay. Do you think it's good to see videos and, and information that's more useful other than just like somebody does a photo shoot and like every day they put out pictures of themselves? Yeah, I mean, like, <laughs> I don't want to get myself. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. See, I mean, you see, see what like Brian is doing? <laughs> <laughs> Brian's starting to start some trouble. You know what? Let me divert that question away. <laughs> like, I mean, I don't want to cause any controversy. I mean, don't get me wrong, right? I mean, that's why I said different people do it for for different you know, reasons, different right? Reasons, right? Okay. And uh, I think as long as you know what it is that you do it for, mm -hmm. right? Then you know how to put yourself out there, and, um, and well, you know uh, the reason I say that is it's, yeah. a, it's it's almost to give these people a little bit of uh, helpful advice. It's like you know, yeah. Um, it, it, it's nicer to get some useful information from somebody or see something like fun, be a little entertained than just to see the same pictures like rotated up and up and up all the time on on your like feed on on Facebook. You know. Yeah, and that's like you know when I when I post something, it's just like you know, hey, look at I'm 34 days out. This is what I look like. This is what I looked like last mm -hmm. week. Right. You know, this is what I look like now. These are the changes I've made to my diet. This is what I'm doing differently in my workout. Um, and look at the changes, maybe right. So and to me that's real. It is a candid shot. I'm not. Trying Trying to look all pretty, my face might look like it's all sucked in and whatever. Or I, might, you know, I don't know. Like it's just like I said, it's real, man. This is right. you're, like I'm gonna show you exactly. You know, I'm, I'm just might pull up my shirt one day and say, hey, you know, Ramon at the front desk, like my front desk guy, like, dude, snap a shot, man. And I think my abs look kind of tight today. Let's do it. You know, let's do like a little comparison shot to last mm -hmm. week. And it's like, bam. Then I'll post it right then and there. I'm not gonna go home and edit it and you know, you know, Photoshop every day. Yeah, like I don't. I just don't have time for that. Exactly. I, I I really don't. I mean, between us running two businesses and doing personal training and helping to contribute to the businesses with our partners, I just, I just personally don't have time for that. But, right. um, so that's how I stay connected. So I think that's the safest answer. <laughs> <laughs> okay, now, understand something. I do have some female fans too, so I know they want to hear Emily's voice, but I want to piggyback off something that Matt said, and I'm going to direct the question towards Emily, and then Matt, I want you to come in right behind your wife, okay? All right, I'm there. And you were talking about you know taking pictures lifting up your shirts posting the actual pictures and uh i saw the picture of you and i believe you're th you were 32 days away so this yeah. is you know two days ago yep. you look incredible <laughs> incredible you. okay but now what is your diet like well, right now my diet is, um, I keep a very low carb. The last two days I've actually been sick. So that, that picture that you saw, mm -hmm. the next day I ended up getting a flu, so now I'm stuck with this little bit of a cold. Oh. Oh, yeah. No, I'm stuck <laughs> I took two days off, and I just rocked out the best workout ever. I came running home uh, just to get in for this phone call. So well, I appreciate that. It consists of, um, I keep it a, a good amount of protein. I do keep it a little low calorie because my body will absorb a lot of uh, the protein, and I do build muscle very quickly. So mm -hmm. now where I'm, now I know where I'm at with uh, my body fat percent, so I'm keeping my carbs relatively low. Uh, last year I did a lot of no carbs, that left me flat, so this year I'm keeping a little bit more carbs. My carbs that I do have, um, if they are, it's usually going to be oats and I'll mix them in my protein shake. And then I'm keeping myself with a lot of vegetables, right. a lot of uh, lean sources of protein, no steak. The fats aren't high as well because if I have high fats and I have moderate carbs and I have high protein, my body's then going to absorb that and it's either going to gain fat or it's going to water me over or gain muscle or gain that. Um, or gain muscle. So mm -hmm. right now I'm just, I, I kind of play by play it with different weeks. So I started off with more carbs and then I cycled in a little bit less carbs and okay. then I keep taking carbs out. And then I find if my body is getting um, too run down, then I'm going to put in just a little bit of carbs, give some energy, bring my body back up. And for some reason I've, I've got leaner quicker than I thought I was going to this year. Usually I diet a lot sooner. Right. And this year I started 12 weeks out instead of about 16, 20. Okay. Because I've done my nutrition proper this year, I'm actually right on track for where I should be. And usually I'm, I like to be 
in contest condition a little bit early. Not contest shape, trust me. My legs still have room to go for what I want them to be on stage. Okay. But they, they should dial in. Uh, the picture that I did take showed really good justification of my outline. Yes. But there, but there definitely are some areas that I got to tweak into. So I still have time left. And last year I was ready about two weeks early and then I just kept depleting. So this year I'm taking a smarter approach and I'm still keeping those carbs in because now I'm learning from my mistakes last year. Okay. Now, do you have... Um someone helping you with your nutrition or are you doing it yourself? Um, well, I usually do it myself, but because uh, last year when I did it myself and I was a little bit stubborn, I have learned to listen this year. <laughs> That's really hard for me right now to say that I'm listening, right. but I am. See, see, those sounds to me like even the pros, sometimes they need some help too. Absolutely. We have to keep ourselves accountable, right? And right. that's, every trainer needs a trainer. Every coach needs another coach. Every person needs somebody to be accountable to. Because I can easily be a coach to other people and tell them what to do and say, this is what you should be having. Make sure you take these carbs right now. You're going to need them. Your body's going to flatten out. What are you thinking? But in my head, if I think to myself, oh, no, you know what? I don't need those carbs. What are you talking about? <laughs> my head plays the opposite thing on me. Right. And last year I was like, they're like, I'm lean, eat carbs. I'm like, no, I don't. I am going to keep getting lean. They're like, no, nope, your body mm -hmm. eats carbs. I'm like, no, no, it doesn't. Okay. And then on show day, after they saw the pictures, I'm like, oh yeah, my body needed carbs. <laughs> and so now I'm listening ahead of time, and as stubborn as I am, I'm like, oh, huh, my body's not doing all right with carbs. All right, all right. Where'd you see that picture? Oh man, it's on Facebook, man. That one? No, not this one. Oh, me and Emily are Facebook <laughs> friends. Yeah. yeah. And we got tagged that. in that uh, that shoe person that's tagging everybody in There's the shoes. That, okay, if that shoe person <laughs> is listening, will you please stop tagging me with the shoes? <laughs> I've seen the shoes everywhere. I really I love shoes and I have a shoe addiction. Uh -huh. I really should not be tagged. You know you're going to get tagged even worse, right? <laughs> Just like the paparazzi <laughs> syndrome. No, don't take my picture. Have, There's going to be 10 other pictures out there, you know? <laughs> I'm going to have for myself. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. All right. Now, uh, Matt. Yep. When we come back from the break, all right, I want to find out what your diet is like. And then there's something that I want you both to know, and uh, that is we have a lot of first-time listeners that listen to The Body Shop, okay? So I want you to kind of just simplify just a little bit more for the people to actually get some inspiration and find out what they mean by, you know, carbs and micronutrients and macronutrients, so on and so forth. So I want you guys to hold tight. Ladies and gentlemen, you listen to The Body Shop. We'll be right back. Live the FTNS lifestyle. Follow the FTNS four step foundation of focus, train, nourish, sustain. A holistic approach to a balanced health of mind, body, and spirit. Focus. Envision your goal to get inspired, train. Learn how to stay active and use proper techniques so you'll see results. Nourish. Proper nutrition and hydration are keys to staying healthy and energized. Sustain. The essential three R's to sustain your routine. Rest and relax to recover. Build a fitness lifestyle on the FTNS Foundation. Thank you for breaking new ground with FTNS, world's first fitness radio. FTNS Radio reaches out to over 70 million online radio listeners in North America who can log in via the web at ftns.co from any computer, mobile device, or download the free FTNS iPhone app. FTNS Radio will include a wide range of shows such as strength training, bodybuilding and figure, nutrition, motivation, family, youth, elderly fitness, wellness, lifestyle fitness, interviews with professionals and enthusiasts, and much more. Programming will contain a mixture of live studio shows, but encourage listeners to call 650-ASK-FTNS or tweet in. Shows hosted over the phone, as well as remote recorded shows where our hosts travel to the story. FTNS Radio is the missing link to help make fitness personal and create a stronger community. FTNS helps listeners to focus, train, nourish, sustain, and foster the fitness community. 
Follow FTNS on Facebook.com forward slash Go FTNS. Stay tuned for more exciting new shows as we build the fitness community brick by brick. Tune in at 10 a.m. Eastern for Fit You. Your hosts, John and Kelly, will discuss fitness, nutrition, and a lifestyle that will fit you. At noon Eastern, it's time for Jumpstart. Chad and Kat will help you sort through all the fitness myths with the experts in a high-energy format that will definitely pump you up. Listen in to Your Health is Your Wealth with Dr. Cindy at 1 p.m. Eastern. Naturopathic Dr. Cindy Anderson will help you understand your body from a holistic approach. At 3 p.m. Eastern Time, listen to The Nutrition Scoop with nutritionist Jerry Zatkoff. She will cover the latest in ever-changing nutrition information. The Body Shop at 9 p.m. Eastern. It's no accident. Hosts Andre Bricks, St. Clair, and Brian Canone share with you the reality of the bodybuilding and fitness modeling industry as they follow challengers through the Fitness Atlantic Competition. This is FTNS. Need FTNS on the go? There's an app for that. Download the FTNS app for your iPhone, iPad, or iPod Touch now. FTNS, world's first fitness radio, will keep you moving. Yes, 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 yes. ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Welcome back to The Body Shop with me, Bricks. My in-studio co-host, Mr. Brian Canone. And on the line, we have Team Sterling. <laughs> I like that. I really do like that marketing piece, uh, scheme right there. <laughs> Team Sterling. Okay, so let's go right back into the interview, and that was about diet. Okay, and uh, Matt, I want you to walk us through what a, a typical diet day is like for you. I mean, um, there's a lot of basic principles uh, that I do stick to, um, you know, day in and day out. Um, you know, mine might be a little different than others just because of maybe where I'm at you mm-hmm. know, in my contest prep. But when I start off my day, um, there's some things that I've learned from other pros and people that have mentored me through the sport. And um, one thing I've done differently this year is to make sure when I do start off my day, I'm, I'm making sure my body's alkaline. And, um, and I find that's been really, really, uh, really helpful for me. Um, so what I mean by that is I'll start my day off with, like, um, a, green, a green supplement. Okay. And, um, and then by doing that, um, you know, I'm, keep, I'm preventing my body from being acidic, right? And with a high-protein diet and whatnot and um, the stresses we're putting on the body, um, that's the last thing I want because if the body's acidic, I'm not going to be breaking down and um, assimilating all my nutrients. And, you know, um, with that being said, you know, I might have poor energy levels and all that kind of stuff. And, um, you know, indigestion and everything that goes along with the type of diet that, um, that us bodybuilders and fitness competitors go through. So I, I always start my day off like that. And Do you um, drink a, like a, a vegetable drink? Yeah, like a vegetable drink. Like there's like, you know, I, I, a Greens Plus is like I guess one of the more recognized ones that I could probably say is something like that, right? Right, so right. Vince Domani does that. that too. He gave me this big jug and <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't get Andre to drink it. Not Brooks ain't drinking that <laughs> nonsense. Yeah, it's not the most tasty stuff. Exactly. <laughs> I start my day off with that and uh, some noodles oil, which is just some essential fat. So right. I want to make sure I get that and that's just kind of keeping, you know, my blood sugars uh, stable. I do uh, consume that throughout the day. Um and those fats do get adjusted based on the amount of carbs that I'm also ingesting in a day. Um, so, but to keep it simple, um, when I say, like, you know, if I'm manipulating my foods, yes. I mean, if I'm consuming carbohydrates in a day, I mean, probably, you know, earlier in the morning, um, depending, like, right now I'm at the point, like, where when I'm doing my cardio, my fasted cardio, obviously um, I'm not ingesting any food. Okay. Um, I come back home, I take in my green supplement, I take in my whey, and um, I wait until, like, my second and third meal to actually ingest carbohydrates so that my body continues to burn fat. And then at that point, my body's been so fasted and, um, and whatnot from, you know, glycogen. Then I throw it in, and my body's um, more likely to take the carbs that I do in- ingest and store them as glycogen as opposed to, you know, just free-running blood sugars and storing them as fat. Um, and I want to, obviously, I, I ingest those before... I, I do my weights, you know, mm-hmm. and then um, immediately after weights, I'm ingesting carbohydrates too. Um, so, you know, the, when I say I'm like manipulating my foods, it's, that's that's what I mean when I'm when I'm talking about that. And um, and then I, and the other thing too is getting a lot of variety, like with my vegetables and whatnot, right? Right. So just so, just so that I am getting a variety of all my micronutrients from like asparagus and broccoli and um, cauliflower and and all that kind of stuff. So and then, um, you know, it's it's hard to say. I mean, like like Emily said too. I mean, the the diet. 
diet is changing based on what you see in the mirror, right? right? Mm-hmm. And when we do a body comp analysis or something, so like for instance, you know, Friday to Monday, I, I depleted my carbohydrates just because I felt, you know, as of today, 30 days out, I wanted to look like, you know, I'm pretty much going to be ready and I'm just going to coast in. So um, I just noticed I was holding some fat and water in places I wasn't liking it. So, <laughs> I, so I adjusted accordingly and uh, right. you know, I tightened up a lot and I was like, okay, all right. So with that being said, I increased my protein, increased my fats a little bit, kept my greens up nice and high. And, you know, so it's, it's a constant adjustment. But I think is, you know, you just have to stick to some of the basic principles and listen to your body and watch what's actually going on. Okay. I just received a tweet from one of your uh, one of your trainees, Candice Hudspeth. Yeah. You know, Hi, Candace. <laughs> Candace. she's all over the tweets and everything. Oh, uh, Candice is amazing on the tweets. I, I, you know what? I can't even keep up with her sometimes. I'll, I'll tweet about like high and there's like twelve that other tweets going. Machine. Yeah, yeah. I, tell you, I love it. <laughs> okay, let's get into something a bit more personal, right? Yeah. And that is for you, Emily. I want you know what. A lot of females out there believe that if they lift weights and they put on muscle, good quality muscle, they will not retain their femininity, so to speak. Okay, you carry quite a bit of muscle and you stay extremely feminine. So I want you in your own words to just give the females out there listening like your take on that and and, and some tips to help them. Absolutely. First it comes down to body type and I realized a long time ago that I was body type that carried a lot of muscle and to tell you the truth I actually got made fun of when I was younger. Like my, all my brother's friends called me pecs and pipe, pipes and those are not nicknames that I wanted to have as a girl. Did you ever do gymnastics or anything? Oh yeah, I did competitive gymnastics up until about 18. That like changes the, your whole physique. Yeah, it really like, does. Like Absolutely. Yeah, a lot of the sweep and a lot of like the small insertions of my of my muscles I think have developed from that. Like all my yeah. core muscles, my, my abs, they I think they've developed from gymnastics. You can tell I a gymnast really like right by their body type. They're oh, so yeah. athletic looking, you know? Yeah. So if, if I don't do weights, then what happens is my body actually goes to fat. So my body's more of a mesoendo, which means a lot of people think I'm an ectomorph, which is completely not even close to what I am. Right. But if I do a good amount of weights, I used to think, oh, no, I'm going to gain way too much muscle. Mm-hmm. And that used to say to me, you need to do weights. I'm like, no, I'm going to gain muscle. I'm going to gain muscle. And I would gain muscle very easily. So that's when I'd have to start focusing on my diet to make sure that I wasn't gaining fat as well. Now, in a woman's genetic code, they are not going to gain too much muscle because we have estrogen, and estrogen is not a building block for muscle. It's really a building block for, for fat, right. but it's nothing that's going to help you get a whole bunch of muscle, so you're not going to lose your, your femininity. Uh, if you're a mesomorph, you're just going to naturally be one of those people. If you're an ectomorph, there's no way... That in, there's no way possible, I'll say it in a nice way, there's no way possible that you are going to get too big to look like a man. Actually, those, those are the girls, the ectomorphs, are the ones that need to do the weights the most to actually gain some shape and gain some muscle to keep their bones nice and strong right. and keep themselves healthy. Um, I'm, I, my body type is one of those types where I can say, oh, if I do too much weights, then I will gain more muscle. But right now, I'm doing a lot of weights, and I think I've maxed out what my muscle could be, should be, and is going to be. So this is probably as big as I'm ever going to get. And this is really kind of as big as I want to get, to tell you the truth. Okay. Otherwise, I'm going in a completely different area, which I don't even want to go into. <laughs> so for women, generally, if you want to be tight and you want to be firm, and I train a lot of women, and they really want to, they're just like, oh, I really wish I had shoulders. I really wish I had tight legs. I just want, you know, a tight butt and tight muscles. You have to get off the cardio machines, and you have to do weights, because you have to make that muscle squeeze. You have to build that muscle, develop that muscle, tighten that muscle, get the muscle mature and hard for it in order to have that so you can stay tight and that muscle will give you the shape at the same time so it's a big thing for women they need to wrap their head around this whole concept that weights aren't going to make them look like men mm-hmm. um, and weights are going to actually help give them the tightness that they want and the shape that they want and that muscle is going to actually burn them fat so in in, a, in, a, in the long run if you just do cardio you're going to burn away your muscle tissue right. your body's not going to have anything to stay tight underneath mm-hmm. and who knows maybe maybe your metabolism will stay high if it's naturally high but muscle burns cal- calories on a daily basis all day long. Cardio burns calories only while you're doing cardio. So that's the main thing for girls to remember is that if you're on a cardio machine, you're only burning calories while you're on the cardio machine, really not doing too much for your muscles. When you're doing weights, you're actually 
you know, breaking down that muscle and all that time that muscle is repairing, you're burning calories to break down the repair, to break down to repair your muscle. So I find a good balance of doing, for me, for my body type, I do um, high weights with high reps. So it's not like I do really light weights with high reps. And I do cardio intervals in between mm -hmm. and I do morning cardio as well. And that's how I've kind of maximized my body type. I like that. I like that. See, Brian, myself, even your husband, Matt, we can say that time and time and time again. But when a female hears it from a guy, it's kind of like, eh, yeah, whatever. Oh, yeah. When they hear it from somebody <laughs> like you, you know, it's just like, oh, really? <laughs> you know? <laughs> All right. Now, Matt, yep. who were some of your, your athletes or idols growing up? For me, um, the first magazine I ever picked up, um, which I still have, um, was uh, it had Dory Needs on the cover. Ah, big man. Yeah, yeah. So <laughs> for me, it was just like I just loved his density and I loved his hard work ethic, and um, you know, so I loved the kind of, like, kind of you know whatever. I, I just liked that about him and his you know his beastly back and everything. Mm -hmm. And but another person I really did admire was um, Flex Wheeler. I right. like the way that he carried himself. I loved his kind of. Uh, he was well muscled, but it was still to me a more classical looking physique. And of course, like, of course, Arnold Schwarzenegger, you know, and mm -hmm. and whatnot. And I've tried to find, you know, like, where does my body, even though I'm not, you know, by no means some freak, like, where do I fit? And um, I would say for me, I, I think I personally have more of like a classical um, kind of physique, you know? Right. Um, I have very small joints and, uh, and my muscles, you know, they just, they have like a harder look, just kind of naturally. Right. Right, but they're not like, you know, popping and bulging and, you know, like yeah. freaky. Freaky, right, right, right. right. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Emily, who were some of your favorite, or, yeah, actually favorite athletes or um, some of the people that you idolized? Um, growing up, I, I'll tell you the first person that I actually picked up a magazine of was Monica. So when I got to compete against her last year on the same stage, it was uh, it was something that I thought about 10 years ago, and I was like, oh, that would never happen, and then it did. <laughs> right. So that was, that was actually that was quite interesting. I was very blessed to be able to have that opportunity to do that. Now, um, somebody else... I'd have to say I really like the look of uh, Timmy Majorova when I yes. first started growing up. She just had a different authentic look to her uh, Kelly Ryan because I used to be in gymnastics and I actually used to compete in fitness competitions mm -hmm. a long time ago. Um, Kelly Ryan, her gymnastics was just phenomenal. Uh, that's for that's for the fitness related things. Those are the major three. Other than that, it was Kim Zemeska within gymnastics and just hands down she was my ultimate idol. Not nice. sure how many times she fell off the beam at the Olympics and lost it. <laughs> 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 okay, now, let me ask you guys a different question that you probably have not been asked on any um, uh, interviews. Yeah, that's kind of, kind of scary. <laughs> okay, huh? Oh, it's kind of scary? Yeah, 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 go for it. Right, ready for <laughs> oh, no. Here we go. Is there anybody out there that you would like to thank? Oh, yeah. Go ahead. Matt, I'll let you go first. Yeah, you go first. I'll okay. let you go on this one, yeah. <laughs> uh, first and foremost, I, I want to thank um, a lot of our fans that we have because that's kind of what keeps us going through and keeps us committed with it when we hear positive things and we know we're making a really good impact. I want to thank my family because they've really had to put up with me. I'll, I won't even speak for him. I'll just speak for me. They've had to put up with me uh, missing a lot of family things. Uh, <coughs> at least I'm going to the family reunions, which is still good, so I'm still keeping on their good side. And then uh, our sponsors, like Chantel and Justin from Gymstar, they're awesome. Karen Phillips, she's doing my suit for me this year of KHP Designs. She's awesome. John Schinkel, he supplied our meat of Schinkel's meat. So we, we go through a lot of meat. I can imagine. It's unreal. <laughs> a meat sponsor. That's and right. Having a sponsor that, that sponsors you. You want one. Is, is an amazing sponsor. And then thank you, my trainer, Jay, and her, her, her um, our, our gym, Performance Health and Fitness. And then, of course, kind of thanking Matt for sticking by my low-carb, irritable mood swing. Oh. Which I don't have, by the way. <laughs> that's that stubborn thing again, yeah. yeah. I thank you for it. Not thank you. That's right, that's right. Yeah, I mean, I got a lot of big thank yous, too, you know. And, um, uh, you know, of course, of course, Emily, I mean, she's, you know, supporting me. She was my, my biggest screamer at all my early shows, you know. And we, we, I mean, we flew together, I mean, you know, across, like, North North America to various shows and mm -hmm. you know she stood by my side through all of it right you know and so and of course family and but a lot of it really was you know I don't think 
I, I, in my early days of competing or even even aspiring to compete mm-hmm. it was a lot of my close friends you know like when they were all going out and partying and this and that and they'd be like oh Matt you know we'd meet new friends and they'd be like you know Matt has his backpack it's full of his protein his workout clothes and it's like you know we they'd be going out to party or this and that and I'd be like okay cool see ya and I'm, I'd be taking <laughs> off to the gym or, you know right. that. but they understood and they supported me and you know what I mean and even even the other day you know one of my one of my uh, close friends Mike Gradolsky I mean he even dropped me a line and was just like Wow, Matt, like it's pretty cool to see that, you know, 15 years later, you're still doing what you thought you'd be doing, you know, right. and, and those kind of things, that means a lot to me, right, and then, and then, you know, up until today, it's, yeah, of course, like all of our sponsors, you know, like John that sponsors our meat and, and whatnot, and the supplement sponsors that we've had um, in the past and whatnot, and, you know, people like Paul Dillette that have, you know, encouraged us to keep going and, and, uh, and be within the industry, I mean, there's tons of thank yous, and even our own athletes, right. I mean, you know, every day we communicate with them, and, and, uh, and seeing them, you know, be inspired is like, it, it inspires us too, right, it, it just comes back like tenfold, and it's just, we're, we have a lot of good people around us. Okay. And, uh, we're really thankful for that, right? It's just it's all about positive energy, and um, and we see that a lot. Yeah, I really absolutely. Should actually, um, I really should put in there as well that I I do want to thank Paul and the whole actually the whole WBFF and Dillette family. I've been there since their very first show, and I can't tell you how much family they've actually made me feel. And I've been able to call Paul pretty much about anything related in life at all. He's helped me from when I first did my first show to all of the media coverage last year and mm. how I didn't know how to handle being put in the spotlight right. and underneath all of the drama. He, he's just literally been one shoulder that I knew I could always depend on to give me honest, and Paul will always give you honest advice. I will um, give Paul that. Don't even watch <laughs> <laughs> so, I will. Paul, if you're listening right now, which I, oh, Paul's I'm, listening. Sure, I'm sure you'll catch it sometime. I do want to thank you for being a friend and being a mentor and being somebody that actually has guided me into a positive light. Believe me, Paul is listening, okay? Paul, Hi, Paul. Paul listens to the body <laughs> Shop. <laughs> I can guarantee you, Paul listens to the body shop. He's been on twice already. Now, real briefly, how can somebody get in touch with you and Matt? Okay, so our website is launched. It's www.teamsterling.ca. You can get in touch with us through our personal pages on Facebook or fan pages on Facebook. Um, I'm on Twitter, on YouTube. We're everywhere now. <laughs> we are becoming social marketing media extraordinaires. I like that. All right. So now to Matt and Emily, I want to thank you personally um, for calling into the body shop, taking time out of your busy schedules. I know you guys are professionals. I know you guys have a lot on your plate. So we definitely want to thank you for calling into the FTNS studios. Also, I'd like to thank my co-host, Mr. Brian Canone, my other super producer, Big Sean. I'd like to thank the listeners of the body shop. And in closing, I'd like to say this, success breeds envy. The best revenge you can have against a jealous person is to become even more successful. Keep God first and everything else will fall into place. I gotta go, y'all. I see you when I see you. You are listening to FTNS.